Right now, it's really important, perhaps more important than ever, that our political leaders don't lie to us. But exactly what is a lie? How does lying differ from merely misleading somebody? Is it ever morally okay to lie to somebody? And is there an important moral distinction between lying and merely misleading? Okay, let's find out. Hello, welcome to Attic Philosophy. On this channel, we're thinking about metaphysics, language, logic, the mind, social issues. Today, we're going to be focusing in on lying. This is a super important topic because we know the moral importance of lying, yet we all kind of do it. We need to be clear on exactly what lying is. I'm going to discuss the topic in two parts. In this, the first part, we're going to focus in on exactly what lying is. What is required for me to tell a lie? Does it have to be false? Do I have to be trying to mislead you? What's the difference between me lying and merely deceiving you? What's the difference between a liar on the one hand and a bullshitter on the other? In the second part, we're going to focus in on the moral, ethical dimension of lying. And in particular, is there a moral distinction to be drawn between lying on the one hand and merely misleading somebody on the other? Throughout this video, I'm going to be focusing in on Jennifer Soule's book, Lying, Misleading and What is Said. There's a link down in the description. Jennifer Soule is a really interesting philosopher writing on language, feminism, pornography. It's well worth taking a look at her work. OK, so let's start off by thinking about some of the differences between lying on the one hand and merely misleading somebody on the other. So I think this distinction between a genuine lie and merely misleading is part of our everyday way of thinking about things. So here's an example. Suppose at the end of the day, my partner asks me, have you been to work? And in fact, I've been in the pub all day, but I have been to work in the past. So I can truthfully say, yes, I've been to work. That's misleading because I know that she's trying to ask me, have I been to work today? So in saying yes, I'm misleading her, but I'm not lying explicitly. Whereas if I'd said, yeah, I've been to work today, I would be lying. Here's another example. My class asks me, did we all pass the test? And I say, some of you passed. Now, in fact, everyone passed the test. So what I'm saying is misleading because I am implying that only some of them, not all of them, passed. But literally speaking, it's true that some of them passed. Some of them passed and, in fact, all of them passed. So what I'm saying, it's not false, it's not a lie, but it is misleading. So we do have this intuitive distinction between lying on the one hand and misleading somebody on the other. There are other differences as well. For instance, if I have misled somebody, then I must have been successful, right? I'm trying to get them to believe something and they have, in fact, believed it. If I try to mislead somebody, but they, they don't believe a word I'm saying, I haven't misled them. Lying isn't like that. If I'm trying to lie to somebody and they don't believe a word I'm saying, I've still lied. So misleading is a success term. It's partly up to whether I achieve my goals, whether my audience believes me, but lying, if I lie, I'm done. So it would be more accurate to compare lying to attempting to mislead somebody. A lie is like the attempt to mislead, whether or not I'm successful. Also, a lie has to be deliberate, whereas I might mislead somebody by accident through a bad choice of words. So if we're going to compare lying to misleading, really we should be talk about deliberate attempts to mislead. That's the ballpark that lying sits in. There's also a distinction between lying on the one hand and bullshit on the other. That's a technical term. In 1986, the philosopher Harry Frankfurt wrote a really interesting article called On Bullshit, in which he analyzes the concept and shows how it's different from lying. It's such a great paper, I'm just gonna read you the first few lines. 
One of the most salient features of our culture is that there is so much bullshit. Everyone knows this. Each of us contributes his share, but we tend to take the situation for granted. Most people are rather confident of their ability to recognise bullshit and to avoid being taken in by it. So the main difference between a liar and a bullshitter is that in a way the liar cares about truth, they recognise that what they're saying isn't true and they are trying to convince you of something they know to be false. That is one of the central features of a liar and that is what gives it its bad moral character. A bullshitter, on the other hand, just doesn't care about truth. They say things that they hope are going to bring about good things for themselves, not caring at all about whether what they're saying is true or false. Bullshitters don't care about whether what they're saying is true or false. A liar, on the other hand, is purposefully saying something they know to be false. OK, so what is a lie? The dictionary will tell you that lying is saying something false with the intent to mislead or intent to deceive your audience. Now, that's a pretty good starting point for understanding lying, but it's not quite right. For instance, if that was the right definition of lying, then one could lie accidentally. Here's an example. Suppose you get an email from a fraudster. They're trying to get some money out of you, so they're, they're definitely trying to deceive you. And in this email, the fraudster writes out his bank details so that you can send him some money, but he writes his bank details down wrong, OK? He writes down that his account number is 987654321, whereas in fact his account number should be 987654323. So he's deceiving you and he said something false, but it doesn't seem that he's lying about his bank account number. He's just made a mistake. The definition we've got classes this as a lie. It doesn't seem like a lie. So now I'm going to pick up a thread in Jenny Saul's book and look at how we can improve this definition of lying. It seems that what's gone wrong with that dictionary definition of lying is that if I'm going to lie to you, I have to know or at least believe that what I'm saying is false. That's part of my intention to lie to you. So you might say that in order to lie, I have to be trying to deceive you. I have to say something false and it has to be something that I believe to be false. Does a lie really have to be false or could I lie in saying something true? Well, most lies are going to be false, but maybe there could, in certain circumstances, be true lies. Here's an example. Suppose I'm trying to deceive you into giving me some money by telling you this big fabricated story in which I'm completely broke, OK? In my mind, I'm not broke because I've got a job and I've got some money in the bank. But suppose that, unbeknownst to me, I've just been sacked from my job, my bank account's been raided, my house has burnt down. So it, it, it turns out that unbeknownst to me, I've literally got no money. So it's true that I'm broke. And yet it still seems that I'm lying to you in telling you that I am broke in order to get money out of you. If that's the case, then this would be an example of a lie that turns out unbeknownst to me is true. If I'm lying, must I be trying to deceive you? Yeah, it kind of seems important to lying that I am trying to deceive you, especially when we contrast lying with other examples of literal falsehoods like acting, pretense, metaphors, jokes. So, for instance, when Romeo says that Juliet is the sun, he's not lying, he's using a metaphor. Suppose you're playing Hamlet on stage and you say, Alas, poor Yorick, I knew him, Horatio, a fellow of infinite jest. Well, that's not true. You didn't know Yorick. But it's not a lie because you're acting. OK, so we have to contrast cases of metaphor, pretense, etc. with genuine lies. And it seems that the difference in these cases is with a lie you're intending to deceive. But if you're telling a joke or you're acting, you're not trying to deceive people. Rather, you're trying to entertain them, make them laugh. It's a different intention. And the intention 
in the case of lying, to deceive, seems to be crucial here. But there's another side to this argument. There do seem to be cases of lying where there is no intention to deceive. So various philosophers have picked up on these under the name of bald-faced lies. Philosophers like Roy Sorensen talk about these cases. One example comes from totalitarian states, where the population are forced to adopt various slogans like we have always been at war with Eurasia from 1984. These are false, everyone knows they're false, I know that everyone knows they're false, so that in saying we've always been at war with Eurasia, I'm not really trying to deceive anyone. Still, it seems like lying in that situation to say we've always been at war with Eurasia. It's kind of the point of that story that the state keeps telling lies. Here's a different kind of example that makes the point coming from Thomas Carson. OK, so imagine we've got a court trial and you're one of the key witnesses. You witnessed a murder, you were filmed witnessing the murder, the jury has seen the film, so basically everybody in the court knows that you've seen the murder. However, the mafia are after you and they've told you that if you admit to seeing the murder, they're going to get you. So you come out and you say, I didn't witness the murder. Now, because you know that the jury know that you were at the scene of the crime, you're not really intending to deceive anyone. You're not trying to deceive the jury. You're basically just saying this to avoid the mafia getting you. Nevertheless, it looks like a lie. So if that's right, this would be a case of lying without the intent to deceive anyone. Here's another kind of problem that comes up in the analysis of what a lie is. I mentioned before metaphors. Now, metaphors are strictly speaking false. Again, if I say Boris is a Muppet, I'm not lying. I'm not trying to convey the literal truth that he is like a Muppet. Rather, I'm using Muppet metaphorically. It's really not clear what we should say in these cases. So the example of Boris is a Muppet, it's not a lie, it's a metaphor. But on the other hand, we can use metaphors in lying, OK? So if I'm Boris's press spokesman and I say, Boris is the greatest human being ever, that's an example of hyperbole. They don't literally mean it. What they're trying to convey is that he's doing a really good job. That would be a lie. So you can use metaphors, hyperbole in a lie. But most cases of metaphor, hyperbole aren't lies. It's just really difficult to know what to say there. So Jenny Sol's solution in her book is we're going to bracket cases of linguistic error, irony, metaphor, hyperbole, and so on. OK, so we have a definition of lying that basically says, as long as it's not one of those cases, we analyse lies like this. If it is one of those cases, we just, we just don't know whether it's a lie or not. That's kind of a good definition, but it would be nice to have something that tells us whether it's a lie or not in those cases. But that's a really big ask. That's a really tough thing for a theory to do. OK, so that's the end of lying part one. I hope that's raised some interesting questions for you about what lying is, about what constitutes lying, about what's required for someone to lie. If you found these issues interesting, consider subscribing to the channel. If you've got some input on the issues, leave me a comment below. It would be great to hear from you. In part two, we're going to move on to the ethical dimension of lying. I hope to see you back for that. Oh, 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 oh,